Hey guys, it is Marcus and Terry with you today on the old Talk Sober. And today what we're going to do, since I just got in late last night from a uh, family trip, helping out with uh, my dad who's very sick, um, we're going to do a QA. and a So, any questions you have about alcohol, anything on your mind about addiction that you want to share, uh, feel free to share those and uh, we'll kind of just take questions from you guys, the audience. How you doing today, Terry? I'm doing all right. It's a good day to be sober. It's cooling down a little bit here. Falls in the air, and uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was pretty hot when I was I was Southern Cal, which I I think is about pretty similar weather to what you guys get. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I don't know if uh, Southern Cal gets the ocean breeze so much. Does it? No, it, it can depending on where you're at. Um, it's not as windy as San Francisco area, and San Francisco area does get a lot cooler. Uh, but it was it was in the hundreds, Ooh. or like 90s, uh, hundreds uh, when I was there. But it's so much different. It's a dry heat compared to Florida. I actually have become more accustomed to Florida now. Ah, uh, yeah, the humidity. Yes. But uh, yeah, well, hey, well, at least the, the the good thing is you being sober, you were you got to go help with the family, even if it was a difficult time. But uh, that's that's the way I felt when uh, when um, my parents were on in their last uh, last years of life is that I got to go visit them and I got to go visit them every uh, I did it every couple of months is what I would do to them more like three to four months but mm -hmm. um, go visit them and help my brother out because my brother lives right there mm -hmm. so he did most of it and. You know, I went up there and told my brother, "Okay, I'm here for a week, so you get the week off. Don't even, don't even go. Yeah. Don't do anything. I'll take care of whatever needs to be taken care of." And that was uh, that was a good thing to be of that service. And for me, uh, service that's that's one of one of the things in sobriety is we're able to help people and uh, especially help other alcoholics because we've been there and mm -hmm. and done that and uh, we can relate to a lot of the stories. Um, I see Laurel on here. Hey, Laurel, good to see you. And, and a lot of what you post on Facebook, I totally relate to, definitely. And uh, I've uh, felt a lot of those same struggles. And yeah, it can be tough, but we can Absolutely. all do it. Hope yeah, and I think out. it's it, it's good to be sober doing this stuff because I just think about what it was like when I wasn't. Um, because we did a trip when my grandpa was uh, passing. We did a trip out to Alabama, and it was just, I mean, it was a shit show. It was crazy. We were all drinking. We were all having a hard time. Um, and you couldn't be present for each other. You couldn't be present for the moment in, in respecting the people that um, are not doing well. And you certainly couldn't help out. And, you know, I look at it now, and there is no place I'd rather be than sober. Like, that is where life is at. I wouldn't want my, my mind to go back to the dark places it used to go when I drank. I wouldn't want the emotions and the feelings because I'll tell you right now, you know, when you get family together, there's, there's bound to be some arguments and some disagreements no matter what circumstance. And I think about what it's like being able to be sober and not having to drink about those and also not having the effects of drinking while in that situation because I'll tell you what, man, there probably would have been some, some brawling uh, if there was alcohol involved, but because there was no alcohol, I was able to just kind of calm myself down, take a walk, um, deal with things as they come and realize that, hey, you know what, we're not here for this, this petty, petty stuff. We're here for dad. We're here for, you know, a bigger reason and we're here to help and it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what our little quarrels are because, you know, you're going to forget those in a week. But you're always going to remember the situation you were in. You're always going to remember uh, those good times or, or tough times that you had with people. And looking back at my life, I, the ones that are sober are much better. Much better. And, you know, the anxiety is not that bad um, when, you, when you get a new state of mind. And it's funny because, you know, sometimes uh, travel can be kind of rough and uh, everything like that and I used to have to have everything perfect the way I wanted uh, you know I gotta have my seat here gotta have this exactly how I wanted and now I've realized I could just throw on my my headset with a good uh, Alan Watts talk or a AA speaker tape or something like that and I'm just 
floating in the air for five hours in like this little bubble of uh, uh, Alan Watts or Ram Dass or whatever talk you listen to, and it's completely relaxing. Nothing has to be the way you want. I remember um, I planned it out so that I like to sit in the front of the plane on the side so I could go to the bathroom when I need to and I could do what I need to. And they came on and they're like, hey, you know, uh, this handicapped lady needed a seat. And they're like, we need three seats. And yeah, I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I can't, I can't like deny some lady who needs them the seat. I'm able-bodied. So we just went to the very back, do, 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 way back, way back, way back. I'm like, that's cool. I got my Alan Watts. I got my stuff. Bathroom right back here. We're good to go. Um, where I used to get really hung up on little bitty things now it's it's sobriety is is such a gift i'll tell you that yes okay. indeed. yeah yes. those little things hey um for you guys watching uh let us know what your thoughts are on sobriety let us know of any of your questions anything like that we're here today to answer questions and talk mm -hmm. about sobriety so we yeah we're kind of just uh just winging it today we don't have an actual topic so you guys let us know what your thoughts are but, yeah, uh, and we can also, if you know some of the common questions, we can kind of start with those, too. Like the common things you hear. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, I was I was kind of thinking, um, you know, you were talking about the service and that helping out the family and stuff. And that's, that's a huge thing, you know, some of the benefits of sobriety. Um, I tell you, when um, I was remembering, because my mom passed uh, last week, three years ago. Not, not last week three years ago she passed but uh, mm. you know just remembering and I was up there um, three years ago I was visiting and I didn't know what to do you know when you're sitting with somebody that think she wasn't able to see at that point she wasn't able to walk well she has been bedridden for a long long time but wasn't able to walk and and she wasn't able to make sense in what she was saying, like words, she couldn't get them out. So things were starting to fail, or were failing, or failed, whatever. But, uh, you know, and I just thought about it, and then I was like, hey, maybe I could read her something. So I looked on my phone, on the internet, and found shorts, and then I realized, hey, how about a short story that she could, might be able to concentrate on that. I found one, and it was called The Caballero by O'Leary. It's about the Cisco kid when he's introduced to the world, and he's a old Western criminal. Anyways, I read that story, and I'll never forget the smile on her face when I was reading that story. And when I finished the story, she had a, uh, I said, did you like that? And she was able to say yes with a big smile. And you know, she passed three days later, and you know it's those memories that when you're when you're sober. Yeah, there was there was issues with my brother and I. You know, and his strong opinions and stuff while I was there, but I don't remember what we talked about. I remember that, and that's where that's the benefits of sobriety. Is just it's these incredible experiences that we get to uh, that we get to go through, and it's it's a wonderful thing. So Absolutely. yeah, Absolutely, and I think it's it's really important to look at that because you can savor the moments i have found that in sobriety you can slow time down and you can relax and you can realize that things are going to be okay even if you don't have all the control and like vince says he says perfect this is my first day sober i'm afraid and i feel vulnerable yep. and that is part of it embrace that embrace that because you'll be okay i mean you know for most part we're going to be okay. Obviously, if you're detoxing, go to a doctor, make sure everything's okay. But understand that every alcoholic on planet Earth who tried to get sober or is getting sober feels afraid and vulnerable. And sometimes to this day, I still do. And I have to embrace the uncertainty of vulnerability because we don't know what's going to happen. We have no idea what's going to happen day to day. Um, you know, like when dealing with my dad, he's 70 years old he was pretty healthy we had no idea that this stuff was going to happen even even up until now you know he's had four years where he's been dealing with this and it wasn't that bad and now it's having its rocky stuff and you don't have the certainty you don't have something that says well when you get this you're going to be this but you do have a barometer that sobriety in continued um in continuation, I should say, there you go, my brain is still like on la-la land, um, 
sobriety and continuation will guarantee you a better quality of life. It will guarantee that you can feel better about whatever it is. And I look at my life and I'm like, okay, well, there's lots of unforeseen things that we feel vulnerable about. I don't know what life is gonna be like without alcohol. And I didn't, and Terry didn't. And we faced life where we said, we're gonna do this anyway, and actually found it to be pleasantly much better, much more enriching and much more understanding and much more calm and relaxed as opposed to drinking and fighting the day every day. Um, you know, it's kind of like, uh, there's a story I was listening to um, on the plane, and he says, what I want you to do, and everyone try this, unless you're driving, if you're driving, focus on the road, do something else, right? But if you're not driving, I want you to pick an object in your, on your desk, in your, wherever you're at, pick an object or a set of objects, like right here I have the speaker, the little uh, spray sense, and, and some uh, remote for the air conditioner. And I want you to look at those, and I want you to really, really focus on them. Get super focused and notice everything you see, right? Really focus as much as you can. And what's going to happen when you do that, if you did that, you're probably going to tense the muscles around your eyes, and you're going to tense your focus, and you're going to be putting kind of like a, not like pain, but like a strength of energy into the way that you use your eyes. Now what I want you to do is completely relax <clears throat> and just notice what you see. And what you're going to notice is there is no difference. The muscles around your eyes do not affect the way you see. They don't. The tense in your face does not affect the way that you see. However, we think it does. We think that this is affecting, oh, I'm going to furrow my brow and I'm going to look intently and I'm going to see different. When in actuality, none of those things have to do with changing your vision. Right? You want better vision? Get some glasses or eat some vitamins or something. Because these have nothing to do with it. And that's a lot like how life is. We go through life and we furrow our brow and we try to fight and we try to go upstream and, and do the things we got to do and hustle. When in actuality, when we just relax and, 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 and fall back into the uncertainty that life is and understand that we're all here together. I don't need to furrow my brow and, 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 and get all these muscles to be able to see clearly. Seeing clearly is something that happens automatically. Living life comfortably is something that happens automatically. And when we fight these things, that's where the difficulty is. That's where the stress is, is when we're fighting. And when we relax into sobriety and say, I don't know what life's gonna be like without drinking, but I'm going to relax into it and just and just be. Yes, relaxing. I find that when I stay relaxed, um, I'm more efficient in trying to get things done than if I'm trying to push it. And uh, being a professional chef, that's super true in my uh, in in my um, occupation. Definitely, you take your time, do it right. Things go better. Uh, Doggy Dad said, I got a question. Is it possible to be too far gone? And uh, the short answer to that for me would be no, it's not. Absolutely not. Well, sure. I mean, if you're no longer alive, yeah. But I've seen uh, people that, uh, uh, a lot of people that I work with and that, or that uh, fellow alcoholics, recovered alcoholics that uh, I see on a daily or weekly basis. Um, they were in what in the this Bay Area we have a place called the Tenderloin, which is the lowest of the low place, kind of a skid row type place. And a lot of them uh, have come from there, and uh, they've a lot of them have gone back to there, you know. And that's just uh, that's that's a place where people seem like they're too far gone. But I've seen many people recover out of there and uh, build a life. And you know, when you're in that situation, you may not see it. That it's possible doesn't seem possible it certainly didn't for me i thought i was too far gone but uh, i was able to be able to find sobriety um, the main thing is is you got to get help because i wasn't able to get sober on my own my brain was just uh it was in that alcoholic mindset and i had to figure out how to get into that sober mindset and people had to show me how uh, vince you were talking about uh what, what did you say earlier well 
you know, you you were afraid and you feel vulnerable. And then Derek talked about a book by Alan Carr and about uh, um, quitting drinking the easy way without willpower. And um, I agree with that willpower thing. Uh, I wasn't able to quit with willpower. Absolutely not. I had to quit with, you know, just uh, um, with actions. And the first thing I did, and um, I don't know that book. I, I'm not familiar with the author, but... Um, I'd say, yeah, try that book, but try everything else. I tried everything I possibly could. There really wasn't much on the internet for me when I got sober, um, so I didn't really go that route. But um, I did go to the hospital, the doctor. He pointed me in the direction of AA and pointed me in the direction of hospital recovery groups, and I did them both. I did that, and I started to uh, make new friends that were sober. I stopped hanging around those drinking friends at least for a while and I still don't hang out with them in bars but you know I a lot of those people that still drink are still friends and I do stuff with them I just don't go drinking with them but uh, that's that's the kind of things that I had to do and so you you guys if you've watched this stuff I say it all the time but it's so true you need to try everything you possibly can to get sober and when I was drinking I was drinking 24 hours a day my entire life revolved around alcohol. That's that's what life was all about. So what's putting a couple hours or even just an hour into sobriety every day? When I first got sober, I had to put all of my concentration into sobriety. But as sobriety, um, as I got more sobriety in me, I was able to just kind of focus on what I felt was working and then adjust here and there. But uh, that was that was a key for me. It's just doing everything. So if you guys are, if you're struggling, definitely try everything. We've got a lot of people here that don't have a lot of sobriety, but they have a good amount. Bryce got 52 days, and uh, who was it that said 83 days? Derek, Derek yeah, and that's freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. When I got sober, I was like, 52 days? How could you possibly do that? Yeah. But it can, it can be done. Absolutely. And uh, what Doggy Dad said, um, where is it possible to be too far gone? I would kind of argue that, that we were all too far gone. I had to be reached. I couldn't, I couldn't do it on my own. Um, and does that mean you're hopeless? No. That means you need to reach out for help. That means you got to get what you need to get done and, and, and talk to people who have been there and maybe go to a rehab or maybe figure out what you got to do. Um, because to me, too far gone is the essence of, of alcoholism. I drank, and now I can't stop. No matter what I do, no matter how hard it gets, I'm not able to stop. Um, is that to say it's, it's in a way that's like, oh, he's too far gone, he'll never get sober? No, I don't think anyone's ever like that, unless you choose that. Yep. Yeah, and, you know, so uh, one of the challenges for me, and I'm sure it was for you too, Marcus, was thinking that uh, I can't leave my life. I live alone and I have a dog. For me, for me that was the biggest, uh, one of the biggest things that kept me from wanting to go away for 30 days, you know, because uh, rehab's what I needed. And, you know, I had an ex-wife that I'd driven out of my life, but she still cares. Mm. She still cares now, but she still cared then. And she came and took care of the dog. You know, I was able to figure it out. And for me, you know, it wasn't that difficult. I know a lot of people have much more difficult situations that they have to try and figure out before they get into rehab. But if you don't figure it out or just don't just, if you don't go, you're not going to get sober. And all that stuff that you're trying to keep together, it's going to fail anyways. And that's the thing with sobriety. You know, I've gotten a lot back in my life being sober. And if I do start drinking, I will lose it all. That's just what's going to happen. I've looked at my past. I, I've, you know, my brain wants to tell me, no, it won't be so bad. It will. I've seen it a million times. People lose everything when they start drinking again. And it may not happen tomorrow, may not happen in three months, but it happens. Absolutely. Zitri, I think that's a Zitri. My mum, brother, enable each other's drinking. She drinks a bottle of vodka every night, a pack of cigs. There's almost no food, and I ignore her when she drinks. Doesn't seem to drill the message. 
Well, uh, one of the things you will learn in your own sobriety, if that's what you're after, um, is all you can do is what you can do. All I can do is, is focus on my side of the street, focus on my actions, my behaviors, and what I want to do. Now, with other people, you can't force someone to get sober. Um, so what can you do instead? Maybe, you know, go over there and cook food if there's no food, or bring food, or, or try not to engage in arguments. And remember, remember this. When you argue with an alcoholic, you're arguing with an alcoholic version of that person. That is a tainted version. It's not the real version. This is something very difficult that people have a hard time with because you want to get on the topic, right? This is something we talk about here on this channel all the time, which is the working of the mind, the way that your brain is working versus the content of the mind. Now, the content of the mind is the stuff. Um, you know, me and Terry disagree on this. That's the stuff. Now, the working of the mind is, oh, well, when I get the stuff, I ruminate on it or I argue about it or I get angry or I get sad. That's the working of the mind. And when you look at how your mother and brother mind works, remember that when you pour alcohol on it, that's just going to go enlightened or heightened rather. It's going to be on like turbocharge. And when we understand that, it's not to say, you know, take the crap. It's to say, make a rational decision of what you're going to do to make sure that you are okay and to make sure that you understand what's going on, right? Because my grandma said all kinds of things when she was drinking versus when she wasn't drinking. Right? When she wasn't drinking, she was actually pretty okay. Uh, when she was drinking, she was hilarious, but she could also be real mean. Uh, I remember one year, yeah, the, well, we'll save that story for a different time so that nobody gets in trouble there but uh you know <laughs> there was something that happened that was like i mean it could have knocked me out cold in a pool which was bad um and you look at that and it's like okay uh is that really how grandma was no grandma loved me dearly she didn't want that stuff to happen but when she drank she became this different person um and i was able to separate it and say this is drunk grandma this is normal grandma normal grandma's the one that that is here drunk grandma is the one that's obsessed and you see this all the time with people that you know you say oh this person doesn't care about family because he stole something from the family and you're like okay well would they normally do that or are they stealing because they're out of alcohol or or drugs and they can't get it well i would argue that they're they're under the influence and that's why they're doing that um, and when we understand this we start to realize and again i'm not saying excuse it i'm not saying take the abuse I'm saying make a rational decision about what you are going to do, what you can and cannot do. I can't get people sober like that. Now, I could sit here and say, oh, I've been sober. I know the ropes. But I can't force any of you or anyone on the earth to get sober. All I can do is share my experience and, and try to help people see that it is the alcohol. And that, for me, is the key, because if you can see it's the alcohol, say, oh, there's the problem, right? It's like uh, if you had someone with an illness. If you don't know what the illness is and you're like, well, this person acts funny, they walk funny, they talk funny, they're falling over, and, he, and then one day a doctor comes and says, oh, it's that little thing there. We just remove that thing and we're good. Okay, now the person's fine. It was all the little thing they had to remove or whatever. And if you understand this, I think it really helps. Sure does. And, you know, on top of it, just being the alcohol, um, after we after we get that alcohol out of our system, you know, it's important that we start to develop that life, that sober life that we don't have to run from. And that's that's huge for me is is, you know, if I was fighting, if I had to fight the fact the cravings for alcohol or that that mindset for that I need alcohol to uh, solve my problems, which is what I used to do, I wouldn't be sober right now, is developing that life. So you have to go on, go on in sobriety and continue to try to try to develop ourselves, whether it's spiritually or physically or both or all of it, you know, it's what we need to do. And uh, that, that's what works for me a lot. Um, I want to get Ben's real quick because Ben's making lots of comments here and I, I appreciate him definitely very much but i've been seeing a hypnotist 
who also has his master's in divinity, saw him for my sleep problems for two weeks. I've not had a single nightmare. I'm seeing him for alcohol abuse too soon. And uh, yeah, I, I see a, a lot of people. I haven't had to get uh, therapy after I got sober, but uh, I do know a lot of people that do use therapy. And um, yeah, hey, um, I did use therapy when I was still drinking, and I lied. So, um, you know, the uh, I think therapists can be a very valuable tool as long as you're being honest and trying to be open with this person that you're uh, that you're seeing. Because uh, they they can help, they can be a valuable tool, but it's important that you participate. They're not just going to cure you, just like Marcus and I can't cure you. You know, it has to come from within. Absolutely, it's it's uh, the old saying of what you learn gives you options. So if you learn a trick with hypnotism, or you learn something in hypnotism, or you learn how your brain works, it's a good thing. It gives you options, but what you do gets you sober. And I found that in early sobriety, I, I had tried in the midst of my drinking to go to a hypnotherapist. Um, but the problem was is she was hypnotizing a drunk brain. Until my brain got fixed, I wasn't able to get anything out of anything because I was a stubborn pain in the butt who uh, wouldn't listen. Um, now, is that the same for you? I don't know. But I know that uh, trying to therapy and hypnotize a, a drunk brain is just going to get you more of the same, in my opinion. It's just going to be a cycle, right? When you, It's like talking to a drunk. When you talk to them when they're drunk, you're going to have the same conversations over and over because they're going to keep ruminating on the same stuff. It needs to be outside of it, and, and that's where the difference happens. So um, I'm not sure. I don't quite understand this question, I don't think. Low life, 1921, 81, I mean... How would you define, or what actions would you use to define a crippling alcoholic? So what would I define as a, well, um, I don't know that I've really thought too much about the different uh, stages, or, uh, um, yeah, I guess the uh, variations of what an, of how bad somebody is an alcoholic, um, but uh for me, it's it's a pretty simple definition. Um, the one I prefer is, you know, is alcohol causing a negative impact in your life? And that's one that's pretty easy to see. Sometimes it's not, especially in the beginning stages. But uh, that's that's kind of how I define it. Is it, you know, if things are starting to fall apart, that's what happened with me. I started to get negative consequences, and they just kept getting worse and worse. And, uh, yeah. And that's kind of realized that I wasn't able to stop. That's another thing is just not being able to stop. You mm-hmm. keep on drinking. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, you got a Pink Floyd shirt on? And, uh, I don't know. It's got pink flamingos. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. I do Look, love Pink Floyd, that though. Flamingo shirt. Got pink yes. Floyd. <laughs> Got it. And we All did right. have a dog. The dog's laying on the on the ground there. She wants to hang out with me since I was gone. Oh yeah, doggy oh, misses. That's good. Hey, do you have a cat? The cat ignore you? I don't have a cat. If oh. I, I think we we don't have a cat because it just ignored us completely and never came here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cats are fun. All right. Uh, let's see here. Zetrusy. Yes, sir. I've been sober for four months. Congrats on that. Off ciggies, uh, cigarettes for five months. Want to be a good example for when I have kids. Appreciate the response. Been counseling a while. Wish I did it sooner. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's the that's the best thing is, is get sober. And sometimes, it's not a guarantee, but sometimes sobriety has a domino effect in your family. I know it did for mine where I got sober and then my brother got sober and we were able to help each other through the things um so maybe maybe that'll happen i don't know but uh you know keep doing what you can do keep your sobriety first and center because if you don't have your sobriety you don't have anything um and if you ever do fall back get back up focus on sobriety keep on yeah right on congratulations zetracy absolutely 
Ben, you're talking about the cell phone and the way you feel about you. You feel the same as your cell phone is the way you feel about alcohol with PTSD. It's very addictive and causes depression and anxiety. Good article called "Computers in the Brain." I call my phone a walkie-talkie. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, definitely can be addictive, and um, I don't know. I just uh, I try not to be on it too much. I try not to spend too much time on the screen. Um, but, you know, it's easy to do. It's in our hand. We're sitting there. We're sitting there. At a, you know, the hardest part is uh, is keeping off the phone when, you know, I'm trying to engage, like, in a meeting or or somewhere where you can kind of kind of take a glance at it. And then you're not focusing on what you should be focusing on. And I just try to keep it in the pocket or whatever. Mm-hmm. That seems to help me. But, yeah, definitely addictive. I, I, I hear you, man. Um, Sheila, isn't there a difference between a problem drinker and an alcoholic? In my opinion, no, because a problem drinker is drinking even though they have problems in their life, continue drinking despite negative consequences, and an alcoholic, the definition is the same. So if you're continuing to drink and you have negative consequences in your life and you continue even after that, that is the definition. Um, Also, are they able to stop? If they're a problem drinker and they have problems in their life from drinking and they're not able to stop, that would also be it. Now, I will say that the definitions and the crossover lines doesn't matter. What matters is, is can you stop? Sheila goes on to say, I was never one to drink every day or every weekend. However, there are times when I overdo it and times when I don't. What would you call that? I would call that someone who who drinks. And if there are negative consequences, right? If you're negative, con- like if you're drinking once a year and you're falling over and you're screwing things up and you don't like that once a year, or you drink one or two and you're like, I'm just going to have one or two tonight. And you find yourself hung over the next day saying, why did I drink the whole bottle? What's wrong with me? Um, that's what I would look at. And I wouldn't mess with it. If you could go back in time, uh, five years before I was an alcoholic, and say, hey guys, check this out. Here's what's going on in my life. Here's what's happening. If someone could have came along and said, uh, like the therapist said, you are a, you have, uh, what was it? Alcohol misuse. And I said, I have alcohol misuse. Excellent. I'm gonna pour another drink because I'm not an alcoholic. It's just misuse, detrimental. That set back my sobriety by a lot because I got hung up on the names. So let's look at it this way. Who cares what you call it? Alcoholic, funny guy with a hat on, whatever. Call it whatever you want. Look at the fact. What is it doing in your life? Clearly, you're here listening because you don't like what it's doing in your life. That's a fact. Clearly, when you do drink, it doesn't seem like you can handle it. That's a fact. Clearly, this is something you want out of your life. That's another fact. And if you're sitting there saying, well, you know, I don't know what I am, but I still want to be able to drink because that's what this is really about, right? We got to take the elephant and say, here he is in the room. And the elephant in the room says, I'm here because I want a way to safely drink. Me and Terry were there. We wanted a way to safely, we were falling in the, in the, in the street. We were going out and doing whatever we could to get the alcohol. And all we wanted, did I want to get sober? Did Terry want to get sober? F no. We wanted a way to safely drink. We wanted a way to be like, I want to continue to have that amount, but I don't want a hangover. And I don't want to be a blubbering, can't handle my life person. But I do want a way to continue drinking. And what we do is we say, oh, it's everything but the alcohol, because I could just have a little. It's like, well, I know for me, and Terry knows for him, we can't just have a little. And Sheila goes on to say, since I joined moderation management, I have not had any problems, but there have been times I've overdone it. That's a problem. (laughs) I mean, in my opinion, that would be a problem. Um, And for me, it doesn't go for everyone in the world. There are people who, I think there's people who moderate. I haven't met them, but I'm sure there are. For me, moderation was the key to more drunkenness because I can't moderate 
when my brain is, 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 is skewed. And when I drink, my brain gets skewed. So moderating from a skewed point, it's not gonna work for me. What do you think about that, Terry? I know I kind of rambled and it made sense here and I, I don't know if it made sense to anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with what you said. Um, it, it really is a personal, it, it's something you have to look at. I, I don't know your situation with the information you've given so much, Sheila, but um, yeah, some people can moderate. I can't. And I have to look at my own situation. I, I was, I tried moderating. I never was able to. I would consider myself uh, a problem drinker through most of my drinking career. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, was I an alcoholic or not? Was Have I been an alcoholic since that first drink at 11 years old? I don't know. I drank uh, pretty uh, pretty heavily during college, but I still got decent grades. Not great grades, but <laughs> decent grades. I did all right. Was I uh, um, an alcoholic after college and living in the wine country? And I don't know. I didn't have too many negative consequences. I had some. So maybe I was, maybe I wasn't, you know, it's, it's a difficult thing. Eventually, um, alcohol took over and that became the biggest priority in my life. Wasn't I an alcoholic then? Yeah, I could definitely tell you yes. But can I tell you where that line is, where I switched over from being just this heavy drinker that had some problems to an alcoholic that that's all he lived for? I can't. I can't tell you. I can tell you. Eh, it was a few years before I got sober. I could say that, but I don't know exactly where that line is. And that's the the hardest uh, or one of the most difficult things with this with this disease is um, it affects people differently. Some people I know people that are like I had that drink when I was 11 years old and it was the answer for me and I drank to black out every single time I drank from then on. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I have heard lots of people's stories that are just like that. And other people that just, they drank moderately their entire career and did they ever get a, a, D, a DUI or go to jail or fights or divorce or any of those things that tend to happen with people that are, that alcohol is a problem with. A lot of those people are like, no, but I realized that I couldn't control it anymore. I couldn't, you know, I, did, I it was just, it was too much a part of my life. So I had to quit and they consider themselves alcoholics. So it really is a personal, um, I don't want to say choice, but it's kind of a personal observation as to whether you are or not. But as Marcus was saying, the label doesn't matter. You know, if it's, if it's uh, bothering you or you're getting some of those negative um, impacts on your life, then yeah, try stopping for a while. You you say you can stop, so that's good. But then when you do start, you overdo it uh, sometimes, and uh, that's kind of kind of leads me towards the binge drinker type. But I know a lot of binge drinkers that are alcoholics, and they can stop for weeks, months, no problem. And then uh, they can have a go out with their friends a couple times, and then they overdo it. Yep. And uh, some of you know they need to stop too. So I, I would also say um, moderation type programs. People who think they can moderate is probably if if you're a business person, it's probably the single best place to get leads for people who are going to be alcoholics that need rehab. I, I would guarantee it because I thought I was going to moderate. I tried to moderate. Terry thought he was going to moderate. He tried to moderate. Um, is that to say it can't be done? I have no idea. I don't know everyone. Uh, for, in my opinion, not a doctor, not a trained specialist, in my opinion, a, a true alcoholic cannot moderate. In my opinion, um, because it, it just tweaks it that much. Now, let's take a look at uh, Low Life has a lot of. Um, comments. I'm going to kind of uh, summarize them. He's talking about um, alcohol and other addictions. He says he can't walk in the store without the urge to buy a pint. Uh, he can't walk down the, the, the street and see uh, someone he thinks is attractive without the urge to, you know, 
date them or whatever. Um, and, and, and what I would say, low life, and I hate, I, I wish you had a different name because I feel like I'm being mean. Um, but what I would say is urges don't mean anything. They don't mean anything. We have this notion that we have to give in to our urges and we have to get what we want. This is a westernized way of thinking. Probably came from the Rome days where we think we should get whatever we want. I want a pizza, I'm gonna go get a pizza. I want this, I'm gonna go get this. I want this, I'm gonna do this. Urges don't mean shit. If you let an urge sit for an hour, it'll probably go away. If you don't give in to an urge, it's not gonna matter. If you have an urge and don't give in and it comes back, who cares? No one says you need to give in. I have, sometimes, I remember uh, when I get really stressed, there was a time I saw um, some booze. I was really stressed last time I got back from seeing my dad. I, was, I wasn't sleeping right, it, it was just hectic. Time change, and uh, my plane spun around in the air for three hours before we could land, then we got rerouted once, we got rerouted again. I just wanted to be home. It's all I wanted is to be home. I'm like, I just want to be home. I'll walk there. I don't care. And I'm thinking, okay, I might have to get a hotel. I'm not going to be home tonight. What am I going to do? Um, and I look at the menu on the next plane, and it's like fat tire. And I was like, damn, I would love a fat tire right now. Fat tire was good. I liked me the fat tire. Um, but that was just an urge. And it went away. That's it. Like an itch. If you don't scratch it, it'll go away. You're not going to be itchy the rest of your life. It's not going to happen. A bug bite. I don't know why in California I got bit by more bugs than in Florida. Go figure. I don't know. Um, but a bug bite, it's going to be itchy. It'll go away. You don't have to scratch it. An urge does not need to be given into. This is something in our, in our culture, instant gratification. I got to have what I want. Turn on the TV. I could watch any program from around the world right now right now and we have become instant gratification junkies and with alcohol you have another component and that component is the chemical addiction and if we can remember to say i'm not going to do it i'm not going to do it and like the lady who's who's trying to moderate give it up for a year if it's no problem and you're not an alcoholic and there's nothing to worry about should be no problem giving up alcohol for a year Oh, but I can't do that. And I'm not saying this is you. This was me. Oh, but I can't do that. I, for a whole year? Yeah, it's just a drink. It's just like coffee. If you're not an alcoholic, it doesn't matter. Or does it? Hmm. Or does it? And that or does it is where the problem lies. Because for me, you asked me to give up alcohol for a year, I would have been like, how, how am I going to live life? Without alcohol, how do people live? But to most other people who aren't alcoholics, they don't care. They're like, give up alcohol, big deal. I'll have Diet Coke, which is bad too. I gave up Diet Coke recently as well. Um, but those are the things we look at where it's like, I fear living without this. Why? Because I'm attached to it, because I'm an alcoholic. And if I'm, if I'm freaking out about this, we have to look at that. And we look at it and say, I don't have to give in to this. And the best way to do it is do something else. Do something else. Listen to a talk, uh, listen to a tape, read a book, go for a walk, engage with something other than what the urge is telling you to do. Because the more you give in to urges and the more you, you satisfy, like what happens when you scratch an itch, all right, like I got a bug bite right here. If I scratch it right now, What's going to happen? It's going to get more itchy. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm off cigars about two months right now. If I had a cigar today, like right now, I'm fine. I was in Vegas uh, and I played the video poker. I lost 40 bucks in like two minutes because Vegas is rigged, I tell you. Um, <laughs> but I'm in there and they get you in the airport and there's like this little door and you go into this room that's like cigarette, like you're in a cigarette. Like I think you just poof walk into a cigarette. And I was like, this is gross. But I did want a cigar, you know, the nicotine made me want one. And I know for a fact, if I had a cigar today, I'd want another one. Just the way the cookie crumbles. And what I do is say, I can, 
I can resist the first one. I can say I'm not going to have the first drink. I'm not going to have the first cigar. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that, right? And we look at that and say, I don't have to deal with this that way. I don't have to give in. I have power against the first drink. But once the first drink goes down the hatch, power gone because my mind is tweaked by the substance. And once we get that, life starts to change, or at least it did for me. Yes, indeed. I want to hit Pat Blah Blah's question. Mm -hmm. I can't go to rehab. Can I do it at home? Uh, maybe. But uh, really, the best way to get sober is to get help. And, and go to the doctor. Uh, yes. So that's what I was going to say, is the first thing you need to do is you do need to go to a doctor. Absolutely. If you're trying to get sober, they can help you figure out what level of addiction you are, whether you're, whether you're having withdrawals whether you're going to have withdrawals, they're going to help you with that because uh, detoxing from alcohol, can it can kill. So you need to go to the doctor. The other thing you can do is 12-step uh, uh, meetings, AA. They're in, I don't know where you are, but I know AA is in like 170 countries. Uh, there's, you can probably find one. That's free. I know many people that have gotten sober without rehab. Many, 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 many that have done it, but uh, but they did need help, and you got to get yourself to somebody who's educated in the withdrawal process, and that would be a doctor. And you need to get with people that are educated in the going through it experience, like uh, Marcus and I have gone through it, so we could we're able to help people through from our own experience. But those meetings, there's lots of people that have gotten sober and that have remained sober. And they can help you with their experience because I guarantee you, whatever you're going through, somebody else has probably gone through a very similar thing. And they can help you navigate that stuff. So, can you do it at home all by yourself? Uh, maybe. I know I couldn't. I tried a hundred times and it didn't work. I had to have somebody help me. And that was the important, that was the, the key for me is me wanting to get sober deep down inside and people helping me and showing me how. So, there you go. Um, what else we got here? Let's see. I always told myself I will only have two drinks and I ended up drinking till 2 a.m. closing the bar. Monica, right there with you. I can't have two. I can't have one. Um, and I'm glad. I don't want to dabble in that anymore. I don't want the risk that I might be an alcoholic again. Um, I, I just, and for what? For what? So you could have a drink that tastes a little bit worse than like if it had no alcohol in it. Um, for those that have to have it, uh, we talk sometimes about non-alcoholic beer, uh, which for me, I did not touch for five years. I was like, five years, I don't want anything that reminds me of alcohol. Uh, five years into sobriety, I, I tried a non-alcoholic beer, and I've been fine with them for, I don't know, three years now. Um, and I take them or leave them. Like, I could have one or not have one. Uh, actually, lately, I've been drinking a lot of uh, green smoothies and, and drinks like that, like good stuff. Um, and I feel amazing. I, I could go run up a mountain if there was a mountain in Florida, but there is no mountain in Florida. So I just sit here in my office and, and do nothing. But uh, I did get an exercise bike. It's one of those um, those insane bikes that the harder you pedal, like, the harder it gets. So we'll see how Peloton? that works. No. No, it's a, it's a Schwinn assault bike, I think. All right. Yeah, like, the harder you pedal, it's almost like, if I could picture it this way, you're riding a bike. You go slow. It's normal. You get the urge to pedal fast. And it's like fists come out of the bike and just start beating the hell out of you. It's a, it gets worse as you go along. And, like, it's a trap because you want to go faster, but it keeps getting worse. And then your heart rate's like a zillion. And apparently that's good. I don't know. So I got the fist <laughs> bike. And, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to go on that. As yeah, green you don't explode. Okay. Yeah. And if I explode, I'll let you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, I'm just alluding to exercise. Exercise is big. 
Mm -hmm. um, for me, when I first got sober, I wasn't able to. I was physically unable to. Uh, but you know what I did a few months into sobriety is I went and got a physical. Kind of give my give myself a baseline. Then the doctor could tell me, well, you could probably do this. Why don't you start by walking? Maybe you can. I, I'm a cyclist, so maybe you can go on some short, easy bike rides. But don't kick it in full blast. So I followed his advice. And, hey, that's one thing we can do when we're sober is we can actually follow the doctor's advice, and that's what I uh, that's what I try to do now. But um, you know, the exercise is a big part of my sobriety. Um, you know, I, I, any of you, uh, any of you that don't have a whole lot of sobriety, but some sobriety, maybe you're wondering, like, what what the heck do I do all day? That's what I wondered when I got sober: is what am I going to do? I didn't know what to do, but exercise takes up a lot of that time. It gets my mind um, focused on something other than alcohol, and uh, yeah, it, it helps me immensely. And it, you know, you get in better shape because of it. I've I'm. 45 pounds less than I was when I quit drinking. So, you know, it, it, there there are benefits. And it did not happen right away. It took a long time. So if you did just quit and you're looking to lose some weight, it usually doesn't happen right away. Mm. Somebody was talking about food on here. I, for, I forgot it. I didn't read it that deeply. But, um, oh, you're trying to eat healthier, I think. And for me, you know what, uh, when I first got sober, the... Uh, the important thing for me was to stay sober. Yeah, I tried not to go to the and get the greasy burgers and stuff like that, but I didn't try that hard. The most important thing was staying sober. All the other stuff, um, people told me, and I tell other people now, that uh, worry about the alcohol right now. If the doctor's telling you you absolutely need to change your diet right now, then do it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But uh, for most of us, Sobriety is enough to worry about because that's that's the first thing that's going to kill us is if we don't get sober and stay sober. That's a that's a good point, and I have an analogy I'll share with that before we wrap up. Um, with what my dad's going through, he is uh, he's taller than me by quite a bit. I think he's like five nine, five ten, um, and because of the complications, he's like a hundred and hundred and eighteen pounds or something. And he was on a diet to try to help with the cancer stuff. Um, and finally the doctor said, you know, uh, it's time that you eat whatever the heck you can eat. Like, it doesn't matter. We need to put the weight on no matter what. And it's interesting because even though some of the stuff that he eats isn't ideal, right? Like, we'll go get a burger because it's like, if you feel like you can eat a burger, we need to put some weight on you. Because there's an urgency of okay, if you keep losing weight, there's a whole nother can of problems that we, we're going to open up. But if we can keep your weight up, you'll be strong, even though it's not ideal. Because ideally, he should eat plants and, and no sugar and uh, good protein and all this stuff. Like, ideally, that's what he should have. But unideally, he just needs to eat. And when we look at sobriety, it's kind of like, okay, for me, Last time I drank, I was in a mental institute and I uh, lost my mind. I, I was unhealthy. I was a mess. So to say, well, I'm going to get sober and drink green drinks and get a fist bike, you know, that I'm going to get uh, would have been futile because it would have been too much stuff. I needed to just say, let's get sober. And when I got sober, I'll tell you what, I went and got the hamburgers. I went and got the stuff and I lived a mellow life and I didn't work a lot and I tried to be serene and say, how am I gonna focus on sobriety? Because that was the most important thing. And when we look at it, we say, that's the most important thing we need to focus on. And that was very important. Yes. All right, let's talk about our commercial because we didn't plug our stuff at all yet <laughs> um, if you guys want help to get and stay sober I know a lot of you guys are talking about some books that help um, I have a book that I'm working on and we have a course that we put together to help you understand how alcoholism works understand how your brain works and help you get and stay sober we're not doctors but it is stuff that we have learned that have helped us if you want those resources, you could go over to TalkSober.com, TalkSober.com. I think you'll find that these resources will help you, whether you've been sober for a day, six weeks, 10 months, 
or 43 years, like Karen, 31 years. Um, I think this stuff will help you understand and you will get something out of it if you go in with an open mind. And also, when we look at this, understand that that is helping us further this channel. So if you're getting something out of what we're teaching you today and you want to be able to help spread that message of hope to other alcoholics and get stuff for yourself, go to TalkSober.com right like this. Click on the big yellow button. Now, for those of you who don't want to support and you don't want to buy anything and you just want free stuff, there's a whole bunch of free stuff here for you. Um, but if you do want to help, click the yellow button like this. You can sign up right here, put your name, last name, all your info. It's 100% secure. You can cancel whenever you want. If you don't like it, you could get a refund. We're, we're here to help you. We're not here to, to, you know, just sell stuff. We want to help you guys get what you need. And if you have any issues or need anything, uh, this is a place to go. TalkSober.com. It's less than $1 a day. So for the price of the cheapest domestic beer that is terrible, <laughs> you could be getting all the tools to help you get and stay sober and support the channel. Um, so TalkSober.com. Click that big yellow button. Sign up. And uh, we have like a little community in there where we hang out. Uh, we talk about sobriety. There's all kinds of PDFs. There's worksheets. And if you're thinking about moderating, that'll help you. If you're on week six, uh, like someone was saying, I'm on week six, um, that'll help you. Because there are going to be challenges. There's challenges in sobriety. It's just the way it is. So very, very important. Right on. And hey, uh, join our Facebook group, Talk Sober. Mm -hmm. Over on Facebook, you can uh, get lots of uh, advice and see lots of great things on there. Awesome. All right, guys. I think that's it for today. Go to TalkSober.com. Support the channel. Uh, right now, we're still running kind of a negative, um, and we do want to do this more. Like one of our goals uh, this year and next year is uh, to get a more full-time approach uh, with Terry helping out a lot more full-time um, and we need your help to do that. And if you like this message and you want to help spread it, check out TalkSober.com. And we're going to put together uh, a weekly call just for members. That way, you know, sometimes here people don't want to share the nitty gritty. But in that capacity, you could share the nitty gritty. You could uh, use a microphone and talk, um, all kinds of things. Um, and that's over at TalkSober.com. Big yellow button. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell, and binge watch our videos. Have a good one, guys. Thanks, everybody.